So we've added a camera and uh, we have a simple animation where the camera kind of moves in, moves out again. I'm just going to move the playback head to a point where the animation is done so that our, our text, our two 3D layers are kind of centered there. And what I want to do now is just add a light. Now adding a light could be something you do before you add a camera and that's actually the usual way to do it but in this case it's a very simple com composition and it doesn't really matter. Now here I'm going to go new, light. Now in a true uh, 3D program you usually have a lot of lights and uh, that's because all light to see any detail in a 3D program comes from lights that you add. Here we have a mix of 2D and 3D so the light we use is not going to affect our um, background water video but it will affect our uh, 2D text and 3D space layers. Now here um, we could make, a, make this a color so here I think white is normally going to be fine but I'm just going to make it a little bit uh, yellow so that we can see, see the effect when we look at this. I'm going to click OK. Uh, notice we can't change any of these things and that's because for an ambient light there is no cone angle, no cone feather. Those settings are all for spots. So I'm going to click OK and you notice the color changed here just a little bit and if we kind of zoom in, this is just the light here, this little asterisk. We don't see much when it's an ambient light. I just want to point out we can adjust things like the intensity. So um, here, let's say we want to kind of create uh, a little bit of a light animation here. So we could add a keyframe for intensity and color. And let's say, just want it to, at this point, I want to have some change happen. So I'm going to add another two keyframes. And then I'm going to add another set here. Okay, so at this point, uh, the second set of keyframes, I'm going to go in and change the intensity. So I'm going to make it more intense. And I think I will also change the color. I don't know what effect that's going to have overall, but let's see. Okay, so here, start off, we have the basic animation. I should do a RAM preview. And once that basic animation is over, then we're going to see the effect of our ambient light animation. So it, it just quickly flashes in that color and goes away. Now here, um, I'm going to say this is actually kind of not really what I want for my ambient light. I'm going to delete those keyframes. And I'm just going to reset the light back to the intensity of 114 is fine. And that little bit of color overlay is fine as well. Now, um, notice what happens if I turn on 3D for that background water. Uh, that light is now affecting it as well. Okay, so that's one of the differences here. If it's a 2D layer, the light isn't going to affect it. And it stays flat on the background as kind of a base layer. If it is a 3D layer, then its position changes. We can see it as just this white line through here. And also, it's affected by the light that we added. Turn that off and go back in and create another light. So here, I'm going to control click and go new, light. And this time, I'm going to create a spot. And again, I'm just going to call this spot. I'm going to make it a spotlight. And I'm going to change the color to something uh, completely different so it's going to be obvious what it's affecting. Now I'm going to go with uh, the defaults here. I just want to point out that uh, the feather is what softens the edges. The cone angle is the area it's going to cover. This is the intensity. And you can go to a negative number or a positive number. So 100 isn't the maximum. The radius uh, will be the kind of cone it affects. The fall off uh, is the method it uses for fall off. So none, it will just suddenly end. Smooth, uh, it will be a smooth transition to, from light to from spotlight to none. And verse square clamped is based on uh, on uh, the inverse square law, which calculates uh, light fall off in the real world. 
So again, here we can set uh, certain parameters. If we have smooth, we can uh, change the fall off distance. But if we're using inverse square clamped, then the computer is what determines that. So uh, here, I'm going to uh, just go in. Shadow darkness, I'm going to just dial that down a little bit and click OK. So now I have a light. Um, let's just, I can go in and, and just kind of move it around. And here, let's just see what we have in terms of, of color. So the positioning of this is a little awkward, maybe. Um, and this happens a lot with lights, especially if you've gone in and changed the uh, positioning a little bit. I'm just going to go in and kind of move that back. Uh, you notice with the spotlight, you have a transform option. And zero this out. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit too sparse. And uh, sometimes it's just very difficult to see where it's pointing. So here, this is known as the area of interest. And you can kind of move that around. Here, I'm going to go in and uh, maybe just under light options, just intensify this a little bit. And actually, maybe to make it more visible, I will turn off the other one as well. So here, I'm just going to change that slightly. And one of the problems with 3D space is that it can be very difficult to actually see exactly where, um, what kind of space we're looking at. So again, here, I'm just going to go in and adjust some of these settings. Cone angle, again, makes it wider. Intensity, and here you can see the intensity is where we really kind of start to see a difference. So at, at 100, it wasn't really kind of having that much of an effect on our composition. And you can see how the ambient light kind of offsets some of the effect it's having. So with the spotlight, it might be easier to go in and just kind of create some of the settings without the spot on. And again, here, we can just kind of click in here and move it around. Now, intensity, we can increase. This is what's known as the point of interest. And you can see that we can direct where our spotlight is actually going to shine with this. So here, let's say um, what we want to do is just kind of move the spotlight across we can animate point of interest. So here, let's say we start in this corner. And then at this point, add another keyframe. And just move that point of interest. Whoops. And here, I need to have the move tool selected, not the smooth curve one. And again, here, we can just move it across. I'm going to um, add a little bit of a curve there. And now I can see how that looks. So this is the animation in. The spotlight moves across. And then I think at the end, I'm just going to add another keyframe there for intensity. So maybe a little bit more of one over here for intensity. I'm going to increase that. And then at this point, at the very end, I'm going to add another intensity keyframe and just dial that way back. Okay, so if I turn on my ambient light source as well, now we're going to see how that spotlight works. Now here the yellow ambient light is really overpowering the blue, so we're not getting that much of a color mix. But there that's uh, a basic uh, animation. Two different lights where one of the lights, the spotlight, is animated.